Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a kind of split text effect image thing. Like I'm not sure what this particular effect is called. So if you do know, please do let me and everyone else know down in the description. I'm sure it's got a proper name, but it looks pretty cool. And we're gonna be doing this all in Adobe InDesign. So a bit different today, but anyway, that's enough rambling. Let's hop into InDesign and we can start. So you can see I've created a new document. We've got an A4 sheet of paper, landscape orientation. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the text tool or the type tool, left click and drag to draw a box. And I'm gonna type a word. This can be any word. I'm gonna be using the word learn. And then if I just drag over this, now, if you're on an older version of InDesign, you may have a lot of options along the top for selecting fonts and everything. You can access all of the old panels as well up here from the Windows dropdown. On the latest version, you have this contextual properties panel on the right. So I've got all my font options and everything else for the selected object over here. So we can adjust properties like size and all that good stuff. And I could pick a font from the dropdown. I have a font in mind for this tutorial actually, and it's called Kanji underscore PA. I've got no idea where I got it from. Can't even remember. But let's just bring this up. And you can see clicking on the <laughs> on the increase size, it's very slow and very manual. We can do this a quicker way. So if we grab the main selection tool, and first of all, I'm just gonna right click on this text object, go down to fitting and fit the frame to the content. And you can see if I try to resize, it does only resize the frame. So let's undo that. And I can hold down Command or Control, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. Do the same again. And well, it distorts it, which isn't quite what we want. So let's undo that again. If I hold down Command or Control and Shift, you can see it will scale it proportionally. So this is a really quick way to scale text up or down without having to go through the clicking, clicking, clicking process in the properties panel. And we can also hold down command or control shift. And if we hold down option or alt at the same time as well, it will scale towards or from the center. So there you go, a few tips about how you can really quickly resize and scale your text. That's actually too big. So I'm gonna <laughs> scale this back down, something like this and pop it in the center and you can see InDesign has some smart guides similar to a lot of other Adobe apps. So it helps me position that right in the middle, which is always appreciated. Thank you InDesign. Next, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle. Will it show me half? Yay, there we go. So InDesign being helpful again, showing me the halfway point in this document, which is great. And I'm just gonna resize this so it covers the entire left half. And if I click on this little arrow here, it will swap the fill and the stroke for the selected object. And I can now give this a color. Now I'm just gonna pick this blue for now. Don't worry, you can change this at any point if you like. These are essentially global swatches. So if I make a change to this swatch, it will update on the selected object as well. So let's close that down. Now at the moment it's on top of the text. So if I go up to object down to arrange and send to back, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this as well. So edit, copy, edit, and paste in place. Just drag this over. And there we go. Oh, not quite half. Okay, let's just zoom in. Because I'm a total perfectionist, I'm one of those designers. <laughs> let's just make that exactly half. And again, I'm just going to pick a color. Oh, there we go. I've created a swatch already. So this is just 5% cyan and 5% of black, so slightly off-white. And again, you can see it's on top, so I'm just gonna send that all the way to the back so it is behind the text. So something like this. And what I'm gonna do is actually manually move the text now. I know technically it's off-center, but because I have the A in the middle and it's almost symmetrical, this letter, I've gotta have that split right there. I'm, I'm sure you understand, you, you, you get what I mean, right? Okay. I mean, it is quite off center now, but hey. So what I'm gonna do next is select the text 
Now for this, you will need to have your text converted to outlines. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, if you convert your text to outlines, it means that it's just going to be treated as a graphic, a vector shape within InDesign. So you won't be able to edit the text anymore, which is the only downside, but I'll show you how to do this now. So with the text selected, I'm totally happy. Font is all good and everything. Go up to type and down to create outlines. So you can see this is just a normal standard shape with a black fill now. We don't need to worry about changing the color of this. And what I'm gonna do is with this text or the image of the text now selected, I'm gonna hold down shift and select this big blue box as well. So those objects are both selected. Go up to object, down to Pathfinder. And if you've used the Pathfinder options in like Photoshop, Illustrator or XD, then some of these will look familiar. We're going to actually use Exclude Overlap. And if we click that, this now becomes a single object with a black fill. So you can see I can change the color and it will update across everything. And actually this, this in itself with this particular font does look pretty cool. But what we can do now is we can actually apply an image to this and it will apply it to all of the black areas because we've merged them together with the Pathfinder options. So let's go up to File and down to Place with this selected. And I'm gonna try a couple of images here. So I've got one here from Adobe Stock. And make sure you have Replace Selected Item. So this image is going to essentially replace the selected item and the selected item at the moment is this black box, which has been merged with the text. So it's gonna replace that with the image. Let's click Open. And you can see it adds that image to this half, but also to the other half of the text. Now, if we select this and move it around, you can see it moves everything together. We can actually either use the direct selection tool here, or we can double click on this and you can see it changes to a hand and we can go in and we can adjust things like crop. Now, depending on the size of your image, if I bring it in like this, you can see there are, uh, there is no more image, so it just shows that black through. We could hit delete or backspace on the keyboard to get rid of it if we did want to, but I don't want to, so let's undo that. So I could adjust the crop. I could maybe scale this down, something like this. That looks great. Uh, what I can also do is if I want to get out of this, I can just click here anywhere on the workspace, go back with the main selection tool, do the same thing again, go to file, down to place, and I'm going to pick another image. So we'll just do this and it replaces the last one. So there we go. That was a photo. This is now like a really nice texture. So if you want to add some kind of texture to your graphics or your text, this is one way that you can do that. And then we still have a color over here. So I did pick this slightly off white, very, very light gray, but I could go and pick a black. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it slightly off white because I have planned this in advance. But anyway, there we go. That's one way that you can create a split reverse image text kind of thing. I will, I will find out what this is called and I'll, I'll add like a proper title of this particular technique into the title of the video. Like I've got to do that, but hopefully you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions or comments, please do drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. You're a